Evening guys, so we're out in the dark, um, well on the patio, Thomas is here somewhere, he's a black cat and I can't see him, where you got? Tom Tom, over there somewhere. Um, what we're going to be doing, see if I aim this up a bit, I haven't got the uh, face tracking or anything, is, I think it's a full moon, so what we're going to do is we're going to do an RX10 Mark IV versus A6700 with a 200 or 600 on and then I'll swap lenses with the A1 to the 200 or 600 just to see if there's any benefits of the full frame 50 megapixel beast you know megapixels being the word um, a one inch sensor on the RX10 Mark IV and the um, APS-C size sensor on the A6700 just for pure interest and fun and, fun and giggles, really. So, I'm going to start off with the RX10. The moon is somewhere. Where is the cat? No idea. Don't know if you can even see me over there, guys. I think you probably could. Oh, he's actually in back in eating his dinner. That's what he's doing. <coughs> So we're going to be doing ISO 100, f5.6, zoom in on the moon, and we are at one thousandth of a second shot speed. And I'll take a burst shot and I'll drop the exposure slightly to a six fortieth of a second. And I've upped it to two thousandths of a second. I'm also going to just tweak the ISO slightly up to two hundred. And by the way, I'm shooting FC wide because it's just going to pick up anyway um, on the focusing. And then that's all in raw. What I will do though, just for shits and giggles is go to extra fine JPEG, which means now I can utilize the clear image zoom. <clears throat> Two times. Except the autofocus didn't read really like that. That's not brilliant actually. Um, so we've now got uh, a mixture of shots from 600mm to 1200 I'm now going to use roughly the same settings I would imagine. We'll see how sensitive the sensors are in different manners. Um, but I'm obviously going to be using 6.3 on the aperture here and um, still ISO 100. Um, we may stop it down to f8 just to give us a uh, um, a slight, obviously with the RX10 I stopped it down to f5.6 which is its sharpest um, f-stop I will stop this down probably f8 for the uh, for the shots just to give us a little bit extra sharpness on that lens because obviously if the lens is wide open you lose a little bit sometimes so we'll try that and see what the um, Few shots there. Let's we'll see if it's actually in focus. Take it out of tracking. Just have it on wide. Um, that was at f8 thousand per second. I might drop it down to 640. It's a bit more brightness. Better. And hopefully, nice. Yeah, it looks pretty sharp image there. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll quickly swap over the A1 to the um, 200 or 600. Easier said than done. 
we go. Because obviously on the 200 600, it's actually got a 900 millimeter equivalent uh, magnification. Uh, same settings on the A1 now. So the images look pretty good uh, on all three cameras to be fair and um, if I aim at there you can see move the torch obviously A1 with the 200-600 on I put the 135G Master on just as a, a lens to swap over and obviously the RX10 there so yeah it's basically a case of um, which suits you really I'm sure you know, there won't be a clear winner. Very, I mean, all images are going to be good. We know that. Um, more detail because obviously you've got 20 megapixels, 26, and then 50. Benefit of this one here, the A6700, is the crop, crop in as such um, on this lens. Uh, but does that crop in outweigh the quality of the A1 sensor? Who knows? Obviously, 20 megapixel one inch sensor with a very, very good lens as well. Who knows? We shall see. I shall bring them up on into Photoshop and we can have a look. Well, right, good evening guys. So looking at the moon, the moon at the moment, literally outside, is pretty much full. I couldn't tell if it's exactly full or not, but hey hey. Um, this shot shot with the RX10 Mark IV and what I wanted to do this evening was just a little comparison just to kind of see the difference between a one inch sensor an APS-C size sensor and a full frame sensor all using approximately a 600mm lens so on the RX10 Mark IV it shows up as a 600mm lens but I think it's slightly under um, but it's an equivalent approximate uh, value <clears throat> um, the A6700 which is the APS-C size sensor and the A1 are both going to be using the um, Sony 200 or 600 millimeter lens. So the only real difference in the exposure will be the RX10 Mark IV is at f5.6 um, because that is its sharpest um, f-stop for that, len that lens and camera. <clears throat> but the um, 200 or 600 will be around about f8 just to give a similar um, depth as such even though the moon is miles and miles away um, but as you can see here we are just going to go and click auto and see where it always disappeared let's not do that um, but we shall zoom in and have a look as you can see there it is pretty sharp not going to add any adjustments at all at the moment and the um, shot speed was 1 640th of a second f5.6 and ISO 100 so what we'll do is we'll open that shot and we can zoom in and kind of see 104% of the image. You'll be pretty happy with that I would say. Um, obviously we are recording on a screen and the image quality itself is obviously reduced uh, compared to the actual real image but um, it gives you a, an idea of what it's like but to be I'm looking at the on screen in Photoshop right now, it looks pretty impressive. <clears throat> Obviously, it's only a 20 megapixel sized um, image, so it's not got the most amount of detail in there, but at the same time, it's allowed us to get quite close and get a sharp image. Obviously, we can then tweak it and do other things with it to make it look better, but I'm going to leave it as is and just open up the next shot, which will be the. Um, a6700 next. So we're going to pick a shot which will now open. There we go. 
And again, I have tweaked this one a little bit to kind of try and match it as much as possible. Because um, that one is slightly under um, due to being F8. Let's go back to what it was. There we go. So we'll open this shot here. And we're going to take it up to roughly the same. size I think pretty similar it's slightly brighter but not a lot in it we could we could bring up the uh, the brightness of the RX 10 there if we needed to but as you can see here quality wise I would say the APS-C size sensor is slightly better quality but there's not much in it in fact let's try and match the um, image slightly let's just boost the exposure slightly there we go there we go, very similar. Bring it slightly bigger. We're not going to match it exactly. But as you can see there, both pretty good. But the RX10 has lost out on the detail slightly. You can see there that it's slightly different. And now let's hop to the A1. Uh, so I'm looking at the wrong one. Do, do, do. And then we'll open the A1 shot, which in theory is actually a better quality image. Um, and it's noticeably better quality <coughs> as you zoom in. And it's, this is hard to explain on, on the screen as you will see. Um, and it is a difficult one to compare um, and it does look similar to the A6700 but there is more detail even though I've cropped in uh, more than the A6700 would have uh, but the RX10 there is doing very well for itself considering it's you know an old sensor now um, but still pretty impressive. Um, but blow for blow, the full frame 50 megapixel beast has um, surpassed itself. It's like I say, it's hard to hard to show the difference on screen with, when I'm videoing it because it's not giving you the the full experience. But it is, they're all very good. Um, but there is a bit more detail. Uh, on the A1, which you'd hope so in reality. So there we go, guys. I'm going to put the pictures in the um, video as well at the end so you can kind of have a look. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think below. I think the RX10 has done extremely well, considering it's only 20 megapixels, also an older sensor. And um, yeah, it's done pretty well, but it's not quite 20 megapixels. Sorry, it's 20 megapixels. It's not quite 600 millimeters on the um compared to the 600 millimeter um 200 to 600 so it's slightly less not a lot i mean one or two percent possibly um when you sort of line them up and uh, try and show it but yeah there we go um don't forget to click the subscribe button do a notification bell as well and i shall see you soon all right guys here is the full image of the rx10 shot so no cropping or anything like that You'd, that is the full image and then I've done a 400% um, cropping, so you can kind of see the size it can be. Um, you can see there it's very good. And if you took the shot and no one else did, you'd be very happy with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. Um, but when you jump onto the A6700, you can now see it's slightly bigger in shot. That is a non-cropped shot, and as in, in the editing side of it. Um, that is the full image. So yeah, it's pretty good. And then when I crop in four four hundred percent again, um, you'll suddenly realise it's a lot bigger. It actually is too big for the screen. So that's the difference between the six hundred and nine hundred millimeter difference in size. Um, and then we show you the Sony A one. So this is 
600 millimeters, full image, no cropping, um, and that's the size it is on the screen. And then 400% um, increased crop, exactly the same as all of the others, to kind of give you the the image um, size that you would see it. So obviously for magnification wise, the A6700 wins, but for sheer detail, um, if you bring the images the same same size in total, zoom in, um, the, A, the A1 actually wins. But this is the RX10 here, um, next to the A1 there. Um, and you can see it's roughly the same size. It's, a, well, I reckon, a 1% difference in magnification, but not a lot anyway. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please click the subscribe button, the notification bell as well. Any questions about the RX10, the A6700, or the A1, um, or any of the other Sony kit, please give me a shout. No problem at all. I'll try, and, try my best to assist anyone. Um, I'll see you soon.